In 1959, at Streets Grocery in Whitefish, Montana's special spice was born. Alpine Touch. It's the taste you grew up with, well seasoned through the test of time. As the tradition carries from one Montana generation to the next, from its humble beginnings to a trusted brand, here's to the next 60 years, Alpine Touch. Montana's special spice since 1959. Congratulations, uh, another, another um, solid victory uh, going away, but you got to be really proud of the, ter the defense and getting those turnovers to make a big difference today. Yeah, there's, there's no question. Um, did we end up with four? picks I think and in a you know fourth down stop they got overturned um you know those are the keys to the game because that you know Cal Poly was was moving it on us um you know it wasn't like it was just a free for all on offense so so those takeaways in particular the ones down on their end were uh were huge and you know we were able to um do enough things to get a you know build up a 35 nothing lead at halftime and yeah, I'm sure we're gonna look at the second half and see things that we can improve upon but um you know, I think our guys' maturity continues to show and coming out against, uh, you know, uh, whoever it is, um, whenever it is, wherever it is, and, and, and playing well. Guys, uh, Tommy's uh, touchdown, uh, what, uh, how excited were you to see his, his first uh, TD of his career? Well, Tommy's got that uh, that, that ability, um, it, it, really good play design to get him in that position, uh, you know, and, and once he got through the, the first wave, uh, you know, Tommy showed off his speed, and you know, we've, we've said it, I think, every week in some facet that, that Tommy Lott's one of our, our, our better playmakers, and, and we'll continue to find ways to get him involved. Um, shoot, he's running down on kickoff, uh, first guy down there a bunch, too, so, uh, you know, really pleased with what Tommy brings to this team, and we'll look for him to do more and more of that. What do you think, uh, how do you think Tyrell looked today? Good. I, you know, I can't say I focused on him a lot. He made a, a heck of a uh, interception. And, you know, it was just good to have his presence back out there. Um, Tyrell is a, 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 one of our better competitors for sure. And, you know, getting him healthy took a little bit longer than we uh, we may have hoped. But, um, you know, good to have, have him back out there making plays. A good game for, for Jeff, too. I mean, kind of all over the place. What do you think of him back there at, at, in the secondary? Yeah, I, I think Jeff's been really steady. And, and he, you know, uh, we need our, our free safety to be able to cover a lot of ground um, and tackle the football. And Jeff's been able to do both of that. Uh, obviously, big play that stands out is the interception. But, uh, you know, Jeff's really going out there um, every down and providing consistency and, and playmaking ability. So I'm really pleased with where Jeff is at. Not a huge stat line for Matt today, but he made some pretty pivotal plays on some third downs. What do you think of his performance today? Yeah, I will have to go back and look at the tape. Um, you know, I, they gave us, you know, uh, the opportunity to get the ball to tight ends quite a bit. You know, I want to say a good chunk of his, his completions were probably that. Uh, you know, made a couple scrambles on, on some third downs. You know, that's something we probably haven't seen yet to this point, and he certainly has the, the ability to do it. Um, but I, I am certain it's another game where there's going to be lessons learned as well. And, you know, um, again, a game where we didn't turn the ball over. Um, you know, we're, we're six games in offensively. I think we've turned it over twice. And that's – you're going to win football games when you do that. we got to continue. We had a couple of balls on the ground today. But um, we got to continue to play that way. And then a lot, a lot of that just starts with Matt and his, uh, his ability to protect the football. His skills really seem to kind of elevate the rest of the offense, and he fits in really well with with your guys' scheme. Um, you know, is that fair to say? What have you seen from from that being able to lift the rest of the team? Well, it's it's good observation because you know our quarterback needs to be able to, to to be accurate in the throw game, be able to get the ball down the field, um, and then be a threat in the run game. And and Matt certainly, I think, is all of those things needs to be able to make you know, good decisions, um, and those decisions can be made um, in a lot of forms. Sometimes it's just checking runs. A lot of times it's reading, um, and, you know, and then on, on the third downs, being able to, you know, do the things from a protection perspective and, and decision-making perspective. So Matt's, you know, I, we're past the midway point now, um, six games in, and I, we definitely have seen growth, and uh, we really need play, you know, him to play well um, for us to accomplish the things that we need to. What's the next step for him, you think, in his progression with this offense? Well, you know, I, in the last five games, he, he, he hasn't really been out there in the fourth quarter needing to make plays. And, you know, I'm certain that that time is going to come. You know, so when the game's on the line, um, you know, we've got to go all the way back to Wyoming. And, and, and he made some plays down, uh, down the stretch there. So, you know, that's, that's probably the biggest thing that, that hasn't occurred over the last uh, 
stretch of the season. But uh, you know, he d consistency. Um, we're we're chasing you know a pretty high standard with him, and and we're going to keep working at it with him. And now that you're kind of getting into the really meat of your schedule, of your Big Ten schedule, um, how, how would you kind of characterize where your team's at right now? Well, I, I think we're a pretty unified team. First off. Um, you know, a, a team that believes in one another, and that's so important. I think we play complementary football pretty dang well as far as our ability to to stop the run to get off the quarterback on, on defense and offensively, you know, be able to run the football, but then also be able to, to, to have explosiveness um, on the perimeter. Uh, you know, in special teams-wise, um, I think we, we continue to – to do some really good things as well, and, and it all works together. And, and I think, um, you know, not only from a player's perspective, but then a coaching staff, I think we understand, you know, the, the makeup of this team. And, um, you know, we'll go back to work tomorrow um, for, for a short week here to prepare the guys again to put them in best position. But, you know, I, I think we did what we, we needed to do. Um, we, we certainly didn't uh, – um, you know, go down to Laramie thinking we were going to lose that game, but we bounced back and we've won uh, five in a row now. And you know, now we got to go back on the road and, and play a really good Weber State team. Coach, we talked about earlier in the week this team trying to find a little bit more balance, but still want to throw the ball plenty. Only 18 attempts, six completions, ran the ball 47 times. Was that a surprise to you coming? coming well, across? they they flipped the script quarterback wise right from the start. Um, it was apparent that. that you know, they're still trying to find themselves, um, you know, and the difference between the two quarterbacks was probably two different offenses almost. And I, I thought our I thought our defense, um, you know, adjusted to that quite well. Uh, you know, I don't even know how many plays, 14, if it was just that first series or what it was. And then they, they wrote 11 for quite uh, – and they're com two completely different guys. And that was a real challenge going in with this plan. Um, knew Brosh wasn't going to play, but then, you know, how are they going to – uh, play otherwise and I, I know Freddie talked about that going back to Monday and it showed up and, and I thought you know they got some plays on us um, that we'll we'll have to correct but by and large we did a pretty good job of a, you know uh, adjusting to a pretty pretty significant pivot as far as how they did things and you said you know with McKay not having really a you know fourth quarter to make a lot of plays going back to Wyoming is that how much, I guess, would you say that's a concern just as a team to oh. not have too many close games? I mean, it is what it is. We, I think we, you know, we've been favored in these games, and I think we, we took care of business. Um, you know, I think the Portland State game was a good game for us to grow. We were down at halftime in that game, so it's not like we just, you know, had these second halves all off. But, um, you know, you got to go out and play how the, the, you know, if we can get up big like that, 35 nothing and a half, we'll take that every week. Um, but, no, I, in the point to that is we just – it's going to come a point in time where we're we're in a slugfest, and, and you know we got to be able offensively to to count on Matt to make plays. But he's got to understand we got a lot of good players too, so it's not just all about him. And I think he gets that. Um, you know, I think at the midpoint here we're relatively healthy. Um, we'll we'll get some guys back this week. Uh, I know as well, and you know whether we suffered any injuries out of this game, I'm not sure, but um, it didn't seem like there was anything too significant. So so pleased with where we're at, uh, our development, our health. Um, you know, we got a short week, like I said, so it's back to work tomorrow. All good. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Thanks. So, Matt, you guys had a play there where uh, Isaiah scored. I think it was his second touchdown in the second quarter. And you mm -hmm. went up behind center or whatever, not behind center, but you got up there and turned around. You said something to Isaiah on that play. Was that a? Did you change something there, or would you say? Oh uh, no, just making the checks in the run game. That's what Coach Hauser has us doing in this offense, making run game checks depending on what the defense is doing. So just give him the call, make sure he gets the call. Just let him go do his thing. So that's what he did. A few games into this season now, you know, that, I guess that's an example. How, how comfortable do you feel in this offense and um, being able to make those sorts of adjust, adjustments at the line? Uh, definitely comfortable. Just, I mean, it takes just all the preparation during the week just to get the checks and stuff. And just understanding what Coach House Rice sees and the offensive staff. So, I mean, when it comes to that stuff, I definitely feel – a lot comfortable in this point of the season. I think Coach Beacon has talked about how, you know, you've studied film extensively, but, you know, getting this experience has been really pivotal for you. Do you feel like that preparation is finally starting to pay off and is starting to translate to on the field? Oh, yeah, definitely. I say just is starting to translate. Uh, still not perfect in some areas. I feel like I can get better in some areas. So I'm just excited to just go back to the film room and learn and get coached on. I think you converted a couple of really key third downs in the first half there. Um, 
how how important do you think those plays were and how good did that feel to keep those drives alive in those instances? Oh, good. It's just always important to convert on third downs. Uh, it's just helping our defense and, and all that stuff, not turning it over or just punting it on fourth down and stuff. But I think we could have converted on a couple more today. So just keeping that consistency factor is something we just continue to work on, just third down, red zone, and all that stuff. So. You can also mention getting the tight ends a little bit more involved. What, what, um, you know, what about the game plan allowed for that? Um, I mean, I'm not sure. Just that's what they call in the defense. They just played how they played. It's a certain formations and plays, and they just did their job, caught the ball, blocked when they needed to, and made plays. So it was exciting to see. What, what do you want to work on the most or improve on the most? Um, just when it comes to third downs, making smart decisions. Uh, just when they're pressuring and stuff and just keeping my eyes on field and just making throws to the playmakers. What, how did you react to Thomas' touchdown? Oh, I was excited for him. Uh, as soon as they called, I was like, he's going to go score. So, I mean, that's what he did. Fast guy, for sure. What has Tommy added to the quarterback group this year? Uh, competition. I mean, he's a great athlete, great quarterback. He's smart on and off the field. Um, Quiet dude at times, but I mean, just his his spirit and character is something that fits well in the quarterback room, and it's, it's fun to be around. Matt, you guys have been favored for the last five weeks, and you're going to go into a game Friday against Weber State with some pretty high expectations. Uh, how exciting is that kind of opportunity for you? Oh, definitely exciting. Just excited to get back to work tomorrow. We got practice, and just watching film on them, putting this game away first, and then watching the film on Weber State, seeing how they play. And just going out there, just doing our job, and just try to execute at a high level is just what we have to do. So it, it'll be fun for sure, Friday night game. Going into that Wyoming game, you know, not having played in two years and nearly be, being them, does that give you confidence? Or how much confidence, I guess, does that give you going into a short week next week? Um, I mean, it's in the past, but I felt like we should have won that game for sure. But, I mean, we just treat one game just different as, as they are and just – that's the only opponent we're focusing on, not looking in the past, not looking in the future, just focus on right now, and that's, that's Weber State. So it'll be exciting. After the touchdown pass to Pickering, Thomas had his interception. How big is was that for the momentum for the offense? Oh, uh, really good. I felt like these past two weeks, just the momentum shifts is something that we harped on and just, um, just connected with offense and defense. So when they get a turnover or anything, we just got to go score and put points on the board. So I think we definitely feed off each other and – we make each other better in practice, so it's, it's fun to see. Thanks, Matthew. Thank you. Appreciate it. Blackfoot Communications is committed to supporting Bozeman businesses. From intelligent network solutions like SD-WAN to fast and reliable fiber-based services, Blackfoot delivers innovative ways for your business to succeed. Blackfoot Communications. Connect to more. So uh, last time we talked to you, or at least after a game, was your first pick, and now you have your first pick six. Uh, how, how special is this one compared to the first pick? It's pretty cool. Um, obviously, anytime you touch the ball, you want to score. So that's definitely better than the last one. And just feels good to get. We preach takeaways all week at practice. So to get out there and get one always feels good. That first, yeah, the first touchdown, I guess, since, since high school, right? Yeah. Oh. I had one against Northern Colorado on oh. a fake punt. <laughs> oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. When, what, what year was that? 2019. Okay. How would you characterize your, your defensive performance, four interceptions, and um, holding them to seven points total for the game? Um, you know, what stood out to you about your guys' unit out there? I think we're just flying around. Obviously, when you get four takeaways, it's obviously a good day, but um, I think it was just a good day of execution overall. Yeah. They, they play a, a bunch of different quarterbacks, but they relied on number 11 for the majority of the game, and he seems to want to run the ball a lot more. Do you feel like that played in your hands defensively today? Yeah, I think we were a little surprised when he came out there after the first, I think it was after the first series when he first came in or the first couple of plays. But we just knew he was going to run the ball more, and you just got to be ready for that. I mean, our main goal as a defense is always to stop the run, so I think that does play into our hands a little bit. How do, how do you feel like Tyrell played from, from your vantage point at least? I think he played good. Obviously, anytime you get, in, get a takeaway, it's a big-time play, but um, it's hard to say on other things. You know, I'm not really – paying attention as much to what the cornerbacks are doing in every play, but I think he had a good game. Yeah, how, how excited did, did how excited was he from, from your perspective? When, when I think he was pretty stoked, you know. It's always tough when you miss a couple of games because of an injury and stuff, especially with all the preparation you go through. So to get out there in his first game back and make a big play like that, I think it was his first drive back is pretty awesome. 
just how confident are you guys now um, through through this stretch of, of your season? Uh, I think we feel really good. You know, I think we just got to keep preparing, and we're going to see see some better teams. So we just got to keep preparing more and just executing better and better. Obviously, any, even in a game like this, there's a lot of stuff you can clean up and learn from. So, yeah. what, were, what were some of those things that you feel like you still need to improve on? Um, for me, there's some missed tackles in there, and then. Uh, I think they kind of threw the triple option at us, which we weren't totally expecting, and they kind of had a little bit of success, success with that. So just, but that's something we know how to defend. So I think we could have done that better for sure. All right, thanks, Scott. Uh, so. We talked a couple weeks ago about you know yours and Tyrell's relationship, and you know to kind of have that interception where you know you knocked it out of the wide receiver's hands and he caught it. How cool? Was that? Um, it was more crazy more than anything. I just remember. I hit him, and I heard the crowd start yelling. And I look, and it's my bad, I'm out of breath. But I look, and I saw Tyrell running with the ball. I was like, whoa, but it was exciting just to have him back out there. Why are you out of breath? Family, pictures, <laughs> yeah. How would you characterize your defensive performance, I think, four interceptions and limiting them to, I guess, only seven points for the entire game? Um, It was all right, but I think they would agree. We, It's, it's like stuff we got to get better at. It was just little things that – like a standard that we hold ourselves to, and it's just stuff they're ready to get corrected, especially having this quick turnaround coming up. How different did the game plan change once the quarterback number 11 came in? They seem to really rely on the run. Mentality-wise, what changed for you guys? Um, I wouldn't say anything changed. I just uh, just played the game plan, really. That's what I would say. Take us through your interception. Uh, Backpedal, Ty had an amazing drop. He threw the ball, and then I just had to make sure I caught it. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, what, did, what did you and Tyrell kind of say to each other before the game? What, what kind of conversation did you have? Um, it was just exciting to have Tyrell out there. And I was just telling him, just let it fly and just do what you do, really. And then, as you see, that's what Tyrell does on an everyday basis. So. You seem, like, especially jacked up compared to other teammates? Um. I mean, obviously, yeah, he was excited because it's like, obviously, that's a special moment, having him finally back out there with us. And, uh, shoot, he deserves it. I'm happy for him. You you guys have a pretty high standard for your defense. What do you what would you characterize as a as a perfect game? What, what are your, some of your goals that you still have to get to? Um, we play the sport of football, so I never really think it's going to be perfect. I think all we can really do is just hone into our preparation and just execute at the highest ability that we can. But I don't think it'll ever be perfect. How do you feel now that you're kind of through the, I guess, softer stretch of your schedule and you're going into the Weaver? How are you guys feeling as a, as a team confidence-wise? Um, obviously, this is a big win for our confidence. And then, like I said, we have that quick turnaround. So I think we're more so just ready to prepare, get back out there, and just Friday, let it, let it fly, really. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Blackfoot Communications is committed to supporting Bozeman businesses from intelligent network solutions like SD-WAN to fast and reliable fiber-based services. Blackfoot delivers innovative ways for your business to succeed. Blackfoot Communications. Connect to more.